Thank you, Luke, and thanks to the school for asking me to come along and, and uh, have a speak or give a speak. I have 422 friends, yet I'm lonely. I speak to all of them every day, yet none of them really know me. The problem I have sits in the spaces between, looking into their eyes or at a name on a screen. I took a step back and opened my eyes. I looked around and realised that this media we call social is anything but when we open our computers and it's our doors we shut. All this technology we have, it's just an illusion. Community, companionship, a sense of inclusion. Yet when you step away from this device of delusion, you awaken to see a world of confusion. A world where we're slaves to the technology we mastered, where information gets sold by some rich, greedy bastard. A world of self-interest, self-image, self-promotion, where we all share our best bits, but leave out the emotion. We're at our most happy with an experience we share. But is it the same if no one is there? Be there for your friends, and they'll be there too, but no one will be if a group message will do. We edit and exaggerate, crave adulation. We pretend not to notice the social isolation. We put our words into order until our lives are glistening. We don't even know if anyone is listening. Being alone isn't a problem. Let me just emphasize, if you read a book, paint a picture, or do some exercise, you're being productive and present, not reserved and recluse. You're being awake and attentive and putting your time to good use. So when you're in public and you start to feel alone, put your hands behind your head, step away from the phone. You don't need to stare at your menu or at your contact list. Just talk to one another. Learn to coexist. I can't stand to hear the silence of a busy commuter train where no one wants to talk through the fear of looking insane. We're becoming unsocial. It no longer satisfies to engage with one another and look into someone's eyes. We're surrounded by children who, since they were born, have watched us living like robots and think it's the norm. It's not very likely you'll make world's greatest dad if you can't entertain a child without using an iPad. When I was a child, I'd never be home. Be out with my friends on our bikes, we would roam. I'd wear holes in my trainers and graze up my knees. We'd build our own clubhouse high up in the trees. Now the park's so quiet, it gives me a chill. See no children outside and the swings hanging still. There's no skipping, no hopscotch, no church and no steeple. We're a generation of idiots, smartphones and dumb people. Okay, um, a pretty well-known video. Uh, about a couple of years, three years old. It's got over about 61 million uh, views. It's called Look Up. And by the way, that's uh, part one, little part two at the end, just to uh, spoil the surprise. So, um, yeah, officially welcome and thanks to the school again for inviting me along. Um, just a quick summary of what the talk's going to be about. Uh, and let's make it interactive. You can just chime in with any particular question. But uh, let's look at, um, you know, the issues we're facing as far as all this uh, stuff is concerned. I mean, that video was about uh, cell phone use and social media, but we're going to be talking about more broader sort of topics and aspects. And a lot of those things will overlap and a lot of the ways that we should um, manage it and control it will overlap as well. So uh, the issues we face, a lot of you will know some of this, but it's good to hear it again. Uh, let's get a bit more positive and look at some ways to solve those issues and try and minimise the um, mostly negative effects of all this stuff, all this gadgetry and the internet itself. Okay, and then obviously at the end we'll have a bit of a summary and you can ask some questions. Okay, now, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from four different uh, areas. I've got four hats on at the moment, okay? Uh, I'm a parent, so coming from that point of view, also uh, a teacher, uh, a trainer, as Luke said, IT trainer, and also an end user. So four different sort of ways that we're going to be looking at all this. And, uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't got any vested interest in any sort of technology as such, so I'm able to sort of step back and hopefully give you some great suggestions about um, how to deal with it properly. Um, now, by the way, I've got uh, handouts over there. Okay, you're not allowed to have them yet because I want you to pay attention and so on. And I'm also, because of the cyborg um, sort of connecting thing here, um, I'm recording uh, the uh, presentation and the audio as well. So just sit back and try and just take it all in and uh, away we go. Now, when they gave me the topic, raising youth, blah, 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 making them balance people in the I generation, I said, yeah, that's, that's fairly obvious. We need to talk about that. But then I thought, what, what's the I stand for? Really? I mean, it's fairly obvious. Well, it's I for internet. So we said, OK, let's look at it from the internet generation. But also, it could mean uh, I, me, myself. And as we know, a lot of a lot of kids in particular, especially if they get too much involved with these gadgetry things, can get withdrawn and just uh, uh, lose a lot of connections with the outside world. So I, me, myself and I, 
Okay, so I'm looking at it from that point of view as well. And the other I or the other meaning would be the instant uh, side of things. So I, for instant, I want it and I want it now. Um, I want to be efficient. I'd rather uh, uh, focus on speed rather than direction and being more effective and so on. So there's going to be a bit of a running theme about that throughout the, the, the little presentation. Okay, so um, I mean, a lot of you would know all about the usual issues of uh, using gadgets and so on. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of this you haven't, um, or you have heard before, I should say. Okay, and how kids can get sort of involved uh, with uh, with those gadgets and and lose the connections and so on. We're texting when we're driving. We still see that, okay, um, as well with uh, really bad uh, consequences in a lot of cases. Laugh out loud. I'm not busy. I'm only driving. So I could bore you with all the uh, statistics. There's 19 million mobile phones at the moment. There's, what, 18 million, 17 million, oh no, 24 million population. Uh, what about all the gadgets? Well, we've got these gadgets as well. So I'm not just going to be talking about phones uh, with the iPads and so on. We're not just talking about internet sort of connections and so on, but we've got uh, this, uh, these gaming machines too. Um, there was a report on the ABC last night. They've identified uh, gaming addictive syndrome or gaming addictive disorder uh, among young uh, people. And uh, what's coming uh, is, is even worse. They've got what they call e-watches now, uh, wearable things that sync with your phone and the e-watch goes beep, you've got an email. I mean, crikey, the phone's probably in your pocket anyway and you want another thing on your hand to remind me I don't even have to you know, reach in with, and do some exercise to pull out of the pocket. Uh, what's coming in years to come will be implants and so on too, which will make it even worse, Dan. OK, uh, not only that, we've got the problem with social media, as I said, so all the, you know, the Facebook, uh, LinkedIn and, and YouTube and uh, Snapchat, one of the worst things they've even brought in. It's the most common way that young teenagers pass around pornographic photos of themselves because they know or they think that the image only sits around on, on the screen for 10 seconds or whatever it is, 20 seconds, and it disappears. So they think, oh, well, we'll get it out there. No one can see it, but it is out there. <clears throat> okay, so we've got to be careful of that. Not only that, um, you know, a lot of us might spend a bit of time on eBay and Gumtree and Amazon and uh, 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 Grays Online and car sales as well. So we've got to be aware of all those other little things that can get in the way. Oh, look, I'll only spend about five minutes on YouTube. It's all right, but, you know, two, two hours later and you've wasted some time. Okay, we've got some great tools. Okay, there's my phone from this morning. I mean nothing's that bad and it's not all negative so there's my phone from this morning off the oops hang on with the other one wrong, wrong way oh no <laughs> so i've got my uh, you know universalis and i can see what's on the on the on the uh, schedule today there's my talk at today and so on so gallery for the photos and the i can check emails and so on okay so you know it's not all bad more about that later when we talk about a bit of a balance with how to use these things okay uh, one of the big issues we're facing is uh, when do I give them or should I, if I'm going to give kids uh, phones and gadgets and so on, when do we do it? How young should they be? Okay, and it's pretty sad when you see, you know, this sort of thing uh, with the kids on the phones and they're, they're just baby, being babysat by the things, okay? And that's really sad as well. You know, the poor old kid can't see what's going on and, well, what am I doing here type of thing. Now, having said that, um, Melbourne uh, Children, the Children's Hospital down in Melbourne is using these virtual reality goggles for disabled children who can never get out of their bed, okay? And they're, they're putting on um, sort of virtual tours of the, the zoo and uh, landscapes and all the rest of it. So again, there's a lot of good that can come out of these things. As usual, it's not the tool itself, it's how we use it, okay? So more about that later. Are we becoming too dependent on these apps, especially in school. So uh, a couple of sort of themes again with the talk is uh, uh, all this stuff in general, but also from a, a school teaching educational and a little bit of a business point of view as well. So a lot of that will come out a little bit later. So I, this is one of my bugbears with um, kids using uh, uh, electronic gadgets too much, too much in schools to the point of saying, okay, guys, there's no more textbooks. We're going to be doing all our assignments on iPads and you've got to submit them uh, electronically because we've got Google Docs and we can uh, uh, collaborate and comment and I don't even have to see you. I can stay at home in my pyjamas. Okay, so more about that a little bit later on. Um, internet misuse and so on, okay. Um, now, they're just getting into a bit more detail now. So some of the issues that we are facing, obviously, uh, 
unsuitable material can be easily accessed. <laughs> and I like the way I added this little bit deliberately or accidentally. Okay, so we know all about all those uh, sort of things that can happen. Um, a lot of the protections and blockers that you might install on your gadgets aren't perfect. There's nothing that's 100% sort of foolproof. Um, and we're talking about things like uh, pornography, obviously, that can get in, uh, the bullying, the stalking, the grooming um, by, uh, by um, stalkers, basically. Uh, just sh schlock or uh, uh, shock images that can get through as well. Credit card misuse. It's called phishing, PH, where they try and trawl and, and grab credit card details and so on, and viruses that can get in as well. So we've got to be very careful and be, awaring, uh, be, be aware of what, what can happen here. Um, now, technology in general can be addicted, I'm, and I mentioned that um, gaming addictive disorder that they've come up with. Okay, and there's a, there's a report there that you can look at as well. And one of the things is, um, gee, how do I know that uh, someone might have an addiction to any sort of technology? Okay, you might need some professional help to even detect that in the first place. Okay, but more about that later, if you like. The worst thing we can do, people, is the last bit there, is that one of the important issues that we've got to try and minimise is not responding to these other things that are happening, not responding to these in the right way or not managing it effectively and with wisdom. Okay, and it's a way or it's a, uh, uh, an opportunity to sort of build um, our own maturity and uh, respond to it properly and help the children, in particular the youth, how to respond to these things, not just say, let's put it under the carpet, it's not going to happen or just trying to ignore it. Okay, so issues we face. Uh, the social media side of things. Okay, as a lot of you would know, uh, there is loss of privacy. Even if you try and put your uh, profile uh, into a private mode, okay, uh, others can get in there and misuse it. Uh, um, employers are now trawling the Facebook and so on to get sort of, uh, to see what they're on about, to have a look at the, their prospective employees' um, personality and what they uh, look at and what they um, uh, post and all that. So we've got to be very careful how far we go with that. Um, the sexual predators, cyberbullying, as I said, through social media in particular, uh, it's time wasting and addictive. Again, you don't even know you're wasting a lot of time. Um, so I've heard. I've heard. I've heard lots of other people say that. All right. Okay. You become disconnected. I mean, no, we're all connected through social media. No, you're not. You are losing your communication skills and uh, 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 social skills and to the point where a lot of uh, people that even come into our courses, they can't ask questions or answer questions. They're just, you know, very monosyllabic in a way. Um, you can make social media profiles private, but a lot of people don't know how to do it properly. So at least there's some way around it. And, and again, uh, like our, our family's got a closed private um, family group. So if anybody goes overseas or whatever, we can just send messages back and forth. No one can break in or hack in at all, hopefully. Okay. Um, more issues we face. I want to spend a bit more time on the solutions, uh, obviously. Um, IT tools used too early and too quickly by students and teachers, <coughs> excuse me, as well as uh, business. Okay, uh, the wrong attitude that schoolwork be done mostly on devices, apps and so on. Again, it's one of my bugbears. The first thing people want to do is to get onto PowerPoint and develop their uh, presentation or start up publisher or start up Word and sort of they're talking to the computer going, come on, do it for me. You know, just where's my presentation? Where's my assignment? They haven't stepped back and done some of these things we're going to talk about very soon. Okay. Um, and it's not just from the students. It's not, it doesn't happen here at this school, but you know, other schools I've been to, there's been a policy which got knocked on the head very quickly. As I said earlier, no more submitting assignments uh, via a hard copy. It's all going to be submitted online. We can collaborate. Okay, no need for face-to-face. -face. So it just doesn't work. Uh, their research and study skills, as I'll talk a bit, bit more detail very soon as well, can be effect, uh, less effective and, and uh, negatively affected as well, okay? Um, because the, uh, you know, they, they, they're just Googling. Educational standards are dropping. We've got all this technology, but again, you know, things aren't getting any better and uh, it's, uh, the tools are a bit of a problem, okay? The wrong attitudes along a bit more detail on this. Okay, oh, let's just Google it or look up YouTube on, on how to do something. So researching involves now just getting onto Google. Okay, not real good. And uh, they don't even, the kids don't even uh, do any sort of uh, credible uh, assessment of that information. They just think, well, if it's out there, it must be true. Wikipedia, it must be true. 
Okay, uh, internet's down, can't do any homework. <laughs> Crikey, I remember uh, uh, little William, our beautiful youngest son, who's now 21, came home one day and said, oh, the internet, I can't do my homework. And I said, well, hang on, do um, you, you remember those, we've got those, in the, in the next room, we've got those funny things with hard covers, they've got a front cover and a back cover, and they've got little uh, bits of paper in between, you know, those books which you might be able to those big, thick encyclopedias I've had for years. So, oh, yeah, I might give those a go. Okay, even worse, because we're not good examples, people. The last point here, the internet's down. I've got to close the shop or the office for the day. Okay, not real good. And if you don't believe me, Adairs, the 5th of October, 2016. Sorry, due to the internet failure, we are una unable to trade today. Sorry for the inconvenience for the whole day. <clears throat> Well, you know, be a bit more innovative. Couldn't they still open the doors and say, look, people, we've got the internet down, but come in and browse and talk about things and ask some questions and maybe come back tomorrow and, you know, let's, let's be a bit more innovative and react to it in a positive way. When I had a haircut yesterday. Why did I bring that up? I had a haircut yesterday and the FPOS machine was down. They said, it's been all down, down all day, Mark. Uh, you can't pay by FPOS. Uh, can we give you our uh, bank account details and can you do it later on? I said, oh, very nice of you. And I said, actually, I've got some cash. So I fixed them up there and then. So they were a bit more, uh, uh, you know, positive and reactive. Okay. <clears throat> issues we face in general. So just a big, big picture summary of all these issues. Overcoming pressure from kids. Crikey. I've got to have an iPhone, Dad, because Billy's got one down the, far, down the road there. And uh, again, look, if I don't have one, I'll have a hissy fit. Okay. We need to be connected and all the rest of it. Uh, we need to monitor the use of technology. How do we do that? Do we have to stare, them, stare at them over their shoulder and watch them all the time? Well, we can't. Uh, determining addictive behaviours, as I said. Convincing our youth that it's not always good. Okay. And uh, the last bit there, very important, which I'll come back to, we've got to give them ownership. We can't just control them and dictate. These are the rules and that's it. It might work short term. Well, they're going to eventually leave home. So we want them to, you know, maintain whatever we're going to talk about. Okay, uh, dangerous and addictive. Uh, Apple's got a lot to, uh, 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 you know, answer for. Apple, iPod, iPads and so on. That's the Apple logo. Now, someone mentioned to me the other day that there's a bite in the apple, a bit like the forbidden fruit, you know, the Adam and Eve and all that sort of stuff. So I thought, oh, that's a good point. Yeah. And then sometimes you'll see the Apple logo looking like this with a rainbow through it. But that's another issue. There's another story. Okay. And we've got to be very careful with uh, the internet. You know, has it become the new uh, precious? Has it become the precious? Oh, he needs it. We needs it or we needs IT, I don't know. My precious internet. Okay, it's amazing what you can find when you Google something. <laughs> okay, to put myself in. Okay. All right, people. Uh, the Jordan Peterson. Who's heard of Jordan Peterson before? Canadian clinical psychologist, okay, starting to make a lot of good positive waves uh, against all this leftist rubbish. Just, just again, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, the horrors of technology, but get onto YouTube. He's got a lot of things that he's talking about to uh, leftist type interviewers and so on and shooting them down in flames. Pardon? Pardon? He's got CDs. What, what are they? What are CDs? <laughs> I've got the cassette tapes. Jordan Peterson says this, a bit scary, and I've got these references here that you can look at. He says, um, we are in the 21st century with regards to technology, but we're still in the 16th century with regards to how we deal with it ethically and with real wisdom. Okay. And he says uh, very positively, you better develop the wisdom to manage all this because we're infants with guns. Infants with guns. You know, we don't know what we've got. It can just take control. And if we don't work out how to manage it properly, then we're in trouble. Um, prepare and arm yourself for the worst is yet to come. He's a very positive sort of guy. I, I found, yeah, <laughs> very, you know, really uplifting and, and all the rest of it. Um, at the start of that, that that's actually a, an audio on YouTube. At the start of that, he talks about um, the problems we've got with cell phones now, forget about them in 10 years' time. You won't have the, those problems in, in 10 years' time because cell phones or mobile phones will be something a bit more sort of worse, a bit more worse, will be, you know, wearable and, you know, they'll, they'll be redundant in years to come. Okay. Uh, now, one of the big problems is, last point before we get to the, uh, how can we solve some of this? Are we giving our youth bad examples? Okay. Um, 
So, you know, we're sitting there and we've got the poor kid there and just ignoring the child there. And even worse is uh, this one where they're all, okay. Uh, now, hopefully, hopefully and obviously that's been staged. Uh, but anyway, um, so the family that something together stays together, I don't know. Um, actually, I was, in a, I was in a coffee shop the other day outside in Wodonga and two chairs or two sort of, uh, you know, round table type things, two families, two young families sitting on these two sort of areas. They didn't know each other, didn't talk to each other. Uh, the mother was playing with a little child and the husband's on the, on the iPhone, whatever it was, sort of texting back and forth. I said, hello, same old thing, you know, ignoring the family, ignoring that time. On the other table, the same sort of thing, except the father was reading the newspaper. The mother's playing with the child and goo goo gaga, and the father's just disconnected, read the newspaper. And I said, well, that just shows that it's not the tool that's causing the problem. You know, it's probably making it worse, but it's how we're using it as well. All right, the newspaper. So uh, again, more about that very soon. Now let's have a look at how we can solve these issues. Let's slow down a little bit. And uh, big picture first, uh, what have we got to do? We've got to really uh, have a, a, a balance or the three-way look as far as wisdom, balance and discipline is concerned. Okay, and um, it's hard to do it all the time, but we try and do this in our family, we try and discuss with them and lead them to the right decisions in a way. Okay, so we ask them lots of questions and, uh, and, and guide them to what the uh, particular conclusion is that we want. And nine times out of 10, it works as long as you take the time and make the time. You can't do it efficiently, okay? More about that in a sec. So again, because of that ownership, we want them to be responsible when they go. Put agreed rules in place, more about that in a sec. Find a balance between the traditional tools and the IT tools we have in school, more about that as well. And be a good example, as I said. So that's just a quick summary of what, what's coming up next with a bit more detail. Uh, get onto their level, ask them how, to, uh, how they use their technology, ask them to do the research, ask you youth, to do the research and discuss latest reports and so on. Get them to convince you if they think they really need this iPad or iPhone or whatever, or another laptop, right? Uh, we got, again, I'll just I'll pick on William. Um, we said about year five or six, he said, oh, no, what, I, I need to have a phone. I said, okay, well, um, I, I want to see a report, William. I want to see a, a business plan and a cost-benefit analysis. <laughs> What are they? He had to go and find out what they were in the first place. Took him about three or four weeks to come back with half a page and he handed it in late like he always does and he worked out it was too much hard work anyway to do the thing in the first place. So he defeated himself and said, I don't need one now because it's not worth it. But anyway, um, ask them to explain why and how they'll use the uh, things and ask them to devise their own usage policy. Okay, uh, again, guide them uh, to come up with uh, what they think is sensible and manageable and so on, okay? make time and schedule it, the, the, the time to speak with them, as I said. Okay, now some rules uh, rules for internet use, some suggestions. Again, you would have probably heard of some of this before, but um, let's have a look at trying to be a bit more positive. Uh, obviously, from a, a hardware point of view, um, you would have heard of some of these before. There's uh, internet blockers, so-called internet blockers, which get installed on the, uh, on the different devices, not just laptops, but um, iPads and so on. Canine web protection, um, Family Zone, okay, and, and uh, Net Nanny, okay. And what they do is they can block websites in more than 70 different categories of uh, topics and so on that you don't want them to uh, see. Uh, there's what's called safe search on all the major search engines, Google and Internet Explorer and Mozilla. They have their own little built-in safe search, which doesn't work that well if it's not uh, turned on properly and configured. So these blockers will, will do that as well, will set that up properly, okay. Um, you can set designated times to block the web access through these things. So bang, nine o'clock through the Wi-Fi and all that, um, it'll stop the internet coming through. Okay, and uh, you'll get, uh, you can even get reports, which is the next bit, or set ad admin passwords. They can't, there are administrative uh, passwords that the kids can't get in. Okay, or even hack in and so on, all right. And the other thing too, you can view reports that monitor the web activity of what's been happening. So, you know, we don't want to, turn the home into a police estate, but um, <laughs> if you wanted some sort of a uh, uh, record of what, uh, even to, from the point of view of evidence of what happened or what didn't happen, then you can get reports like a log and an audit of all that. Okay, and also just in general, try and restrict their ability to install other things, video games and so on. Okay, 
Um, yeah, so a lot of people don't realise that, gee, they can install anything. Well, you can restrict their access for that. Okay, for the devices, uh, set times, I mean, a lot of these things, um, you would have heard it before, okay, set times when they can use them, turn them off two hours before you go to bed, no phones on the dining room table, okay, have more lined up uh, on the, uh, under your pillow, under the bed, okay, same with televisions, no TVs in the dining room, or minimise that if possible. Uh, require that mobile devices be placed in a designated no access area. So on the on the table over there, guys, by nine o'clock, I want all the phones, mum and dad as well, and away we go, leave them there till the morning. Okay, uh, turn off the internet at agreed times, as I said, although the web blockers can do that. Okay, so those four things are some uh, strong suggestions. Okay, or don't do it at all. Okay, don't enforce those rules. Get them to uh, learn how to manage it themselves. It's a bit like the engaged couple who wants to remain chaste before, they, um, before their nuptials and before their wedding day. And uh, they, they tie themselves to a tree about 100 metres apart, separate trees. Okay, oh, that don't work, we're going to be chased. Yeah, but they're not learning to manage and resist temptations properly. So that's a bit of an analogy as to, you know, do we go this far? Do we make it into a police state? Or again, do we try and get them to... Um, do it themselves or manage themselves and report back in a way or report back to each other um, there as well. Okay, people, um, school and learning. So slowing down a bit here too, very important. Um, just before we go into this, um, the, uh, there was a study done in about 2016, uh, Princeton University, University of California. I think Melbourne University did one earlier uh, this year or last year as well, where they had two groups of students pretty much the same level and so on. One group had to use traditional tools, handwriting, pens. I sometimes say to kids, have you heard of those before? Pens, pencils and so on, and, and writing pads. And they had to sit down in front of a lecture and write down notes for that whole hour or two, whatever it was. The second group only had their devices, iPads and all the rest of it. And then they put them through tests after that. What happened? What do you reckon? Okay, the traditional tools, the, the, the group with the traditional tools won in a way. Okay, handwritten, paper-based won because um, even though they were slower in recording, they took better notes, the ones handwriting. Okay, because they had to think at the same time rather than just dictate or be dictated to by the lecturer. And they'd stay, they think, oh, I've just got to get down everything and that's all I've got to do. No, your brain's not processing as, as it does with uh, handwritten stuff. Um, they recorded less information, but again, they retained the facts better, the handwritten group, because a bit more tactile and there's better connection between the hand and the brain and the eyes and all the rest of it, whereas it's out here really with the iPad or whatever it was. Okay, some people didn't even do that. They just recorded the lecture, audio, and then didn't get time to do it later on. Okay, they're better, their comprehension was much better. They performed better in the tests, as I said, and their understanding of concepts and all that was more effective. So there's the um, reference at the bottom there. Okay, so what do we do with that? Um, so do we replace traditional with IT tools? Do we say, uh, okay, as I've seen in some schools and some other areas, okay, we're going to get rid of all our handwritten stuff, and yes and no, there's pros and cons. Well, it prepares them for the digital age. Yep, let's do that. They get real prepared. Well not to the extent of everything else. Uh, multimedia can assist better learning. Yeah, definitely. Audio and video and, vid and uh, uh, images and so on can assist better learning. Um, E-books can be updated more easily. They're cheaper in a way, PDFs and so on. Okay, their end product can be better. I should have said there can be better presented. So the assessments and the final thing they submit, uh, a bit more professional with images and all the rest of it. Okay, and notes, documents, etc., easily edited and formatted, obviously. The case for the no is that pr printed material is retained uh, a lot better, as we said. Textbooks don't break when you drop them, okay, and they don't run out of uh, charge. They don't, you know, they don't have to be charged up. Won't name who it was, but uh, there was a school mass done, not here, and the priest was giving, uh, reading the gospel. Halfway through the gospel, had to stop and look very embarrassed. I'm sorry, my iPad just died. Okay, reading the gospel, the father's not here, is he? No. <laughs> reading the gospel off the iPad. So, you know, let's get up with the technology, but it doesn't always work. Okay. Printed material can't be easily corrupted by inappropriate material. 
okay, like uh, our gadgets can be, as we said before. Uh, research skills are a lot, a lot better with printed material. You know, go out there, read the books, uh, sift out what you need, rather than just Googling and that'll do. Googling and then even cutting and pasting. Okay, so they're not even putting it into their own words, they're translating into their own words. So they're still not learning, it's not, not as effective. And the tool itself can get in the way of real learning. That's going back to um, over here. So are they learning the particular concept with the device or are they just learning to use the iPad? Okay, because that's got its own intricacies and shortcuts and where do I go and I've got to click and drag and double click and triple click and don't click. Okay, so uh, obviously with all that people, uh, we've got to find a balance, I think. And um, in my opinion, we've got to start with the traditional tools at least okay, in the way that we plan stuff and start to do the research and then maybe come over to a, um, uh, some sort of a, uh, electronic version to present the thing or produce the instrument, the assessment instrument at the end, okay. <coughs> Excuse me, R rules for school and so therefore encourage more handwritten study and research and planning of assessments and so on. Encourage the use of physical hard copy resources, don't just Google, okay. Teach them how to use mind maps. Um, that you probably have heard of before, we'll see one in a sec actually. Uh, consider short courses such as REDAC, they used to come around a lot, American sort of group, and it uh, wasn't cheap, it was $500 for about an eight week session, like two hours a session, two hours a week. And they would teach kids and some students on how to take notes better, better comprehension, um, I forget what the term was, it was a particular way that they uh, show them how to uh, pull out the, the important uh, topics or the important points, okay? Uh, limit the use of Googling, obviously, and encourage the use of the IT tools, yeah, definitely, but towards the end of when you've got to produce the actual um, thing that you're going to submit, okay? Um, I encourage you using it towards the end there. Okay, now just to uh, give you a bit of, just to show you a good example, uh, when I got the topic for, for tonight, I thought, okay, I'm not going to barge into PowerPoint, but I use this a lot, a mind map. So there's the mind map, uh, one draft of it anyway, about the IT talk. So just quickly with a mind map, you put the main topic in the middle here, really good for um, revising and brainstorming what you know already or what you don't know. And the first thing that comes in your mind just flies out, that you don't worry about any sort of uh, priority of information. Just the first thing that pops into your head, you put it into a web or a mind map, okay, and then come back with different colours and prioritise it as well, okay. Um, so, uh, and any any sort of draft uh, manuals or workbooks or things that I'm working on and writing, I'll print them out and sit down on the couch and read them. I won't proofread on a screen. Doesn't work for me anyway, okay. Very easy to quickly handwrite changes and so on, okay. Um, now, as a bit of a summary, we're getting towards the end, so involve your youth, people. Involve the youth, make and share the time. That's the biggest stumbling block, okay? We aren't very good at our time management. I run um, time management courses at, at, uh, at the office using Outlook and so on, and a lot of people turn up late for the course. You think, well, that's just defeats the whole purpose, doesn't it? You know, time management, course. where's your late note from your parents? Okay, so we've really got to schedule in a uh, time where we can just talk about things with them. Involve them in discussions, as I said, and don't dictate the rules. If you want it to be a bit more um, effective, well, give them some responsibility too. School and learning, stay a little old fashioned, it's more effective. Find the balance, that's the main thing, and assist them with their work, especially the planning side of it. So the very first step they need to go through to um, produce something, do an essay, uh, assignment, whatever it might be. Okay, maybe sit down with them and teach them how to uh, pull out uh, exam technique I found is very wanting and lacking in a lot of, a lot of um, not here of course, but uh, uh, students that I've seen over the years, okay, they just barge in, they don't know how to break down the question, they don't know how to sort of plan it in their minds before they start writing, okay. And obviously as I said, be an example, lead by what you do, not by what you say. Um, share with others, talk to other parents, teachers and, uh, and uh, you know, real professional sort of people and then review what's been done, well that didn't work. Let's try and uh, backtrack and try something else, okay? Um, let's try and be a, a, a exercise the virtues a bit more. So all you got to do is change those last two, um, oh, back, back over here, change those last two letters there, not virtual, and you've got virtues. So, you know, exercise the virtue of prudence, make wise choices, uh, justice, be consistent, fair, and truthful. 
in the way that you also show a good example. Uh, fortitude, be strong and maintain the, uh, any sort of rules of all, to, all agreed on to put into place. Um, and temperance, exercise your own self-control <laughs> as well. I know what it's like. I'll just try and look at a few old F Troop um, episodes or Gilligan's Island, you know, on YouTube, and you can easily waste an hour or so or two <laughs> or three. Okay, but it's, 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 it's healthy stuff. So look up from your phone, shut down the display. Take in your surroundings, make the most of today. Just one real connection is all it can take to show you the difference that being there can make. Be there in the moment that she gives you the look that you remember forever as when love overtook. The time she first holds your hand or first kiss your lips. The time you first disagree but still love her to bits. The time you don't have to tell hundreds of what you've just done because you want to share this moment with just this one. The time you'll sell your computer so you can buy a ring for the girl of your dreams who is now the real thing. The time you want to start a family and the moment when you first hold your little girl and get to fall in love again. The time she keeps you up at night and all you want is rest and the time you wipe away the tears as your baby flees the nest. The time your baby girl returns with a boy for you to hold and the time he calls you granddad and makes you feel real old. The time you've taken all you've made just by giving life attention and how you're glad you didn't waste it by looking down at some invention. The time you hold your wife's hand, sit down beside her bed. You tell her that you love her, lay a kiss upon her head. She then whispers to you quietly as her heart gives a final beat that she's lucky she got stopped by that lost boy in the street. But none of these times ever happened. You never had any of this. When you're too busy looking down, you don't see the chances you miss. So look up from your phone, shut down those displays. We have a finite existence, a set number of days. Don't waste your life getting caught in the net as when the end comes, nothing's worse than regret. I'm guilty too of being part of this machine, this digital world we are heard but not seen, where we type as we talk and we read as we chat where we spend hours together without making eye contact. So don't give in to a life where you follow the hype. Give people your love. Don't give them your like. Disconnect from the need to be heard and defined. Go out into the world. Leave distractions behind. Look up from your phone. Shut down that display. Stop watching this video. Live life the real way. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. <laughs>